Stephanie St. Clair was born December 24th, 1886. And she was an American mob boss who ran numerous criminal enterprises in New York, Harlem, in Harlem, New York, in the early part of the 20th century. Sinclair resisted the interests of the mafia for seven years after Prohibition ended. She continued to be an independent operator and never came under control of the mafia. She ran a successful number game in Harlem and was an activist for the black community. Her nicknames include Queen, Queenie, Madam Queen, Madam St. Clair, and Queen in the Policy Rackets. St. Clair was born of mixed French and African descent in the West Indies to a single mother, Faceline, who worked hard to send her daughter to school. According to St. Clair's 1924 defamation declaration of intent, she gave Monogram French West Indies, present day Guadeloupe West Indies, as a birthplace, place, not Martinique as usually been cited. When Stephanie turned 15, her mother became ill and she had to leave school. She's employed as a maid by a rich family where she's repeatedly raped by her son. She managed to save money and after the death of her mother, she left Marnie for France in 1912. Although she could read and write a rare quality for black women at that time, she could not find decent employment. She immigrated to the United States via Marseille on the Guyana, arriving in New York in July 31st, 1911. She used a long voyage and subsequent quarantine to learn English. English. In Harlem, she fell in love with a small-time cook, Duke, who tried to prostitute her. Enraged, she planted a fork in his eye and promptly left New York on a bus. The following night, the bus was stopped by the Ku Klux Klan. Several black passengers was hanged or burned alive in front of her, and she was repeatedly raped. Following this incident, she returned to New York, learning that Duke had been shot in a fight between gangs. After four months, she decided to start her own business selling controlled drugs with the help of her new boyfriend, Ed. After a few months, she made $30,000 and told Ed she wanted to leave and start her own business. Ed tried to strangle her and push her away with such force that she cracked her skull. He cracked, her, he cracked his skull. For months in advance, she employed her own man, Briar Cops, and on April 12, 1917, she invested $10,000 of her own money in a condescent lottery game in Harlem. At the end of Prohibition, Jewish and Italian crime families, Jewish and Italian saw a decrease in profits and decided to move in on the Harlem gambling scene. Bronx-based mobster Dove Shows was first to move in, beating and killing a number of operators who not paying protection. St. Clair and her chief enforcer, Bumpy Ellsworth Johnson, refused to pay protection to Schultz, despite the violence and intimidation brought by police they faced. St. Clair responded by attacking storefronts of the business that ran Dutch Show's betting operations and tipping the, off the police about him. The results in the police raiding his house and arresting more than a dozen of his employees and in seizing $12 million, about $216 million in, 200, in year 2016 currency. St. Clair never submitted to Dutch, and like many others in Harlem, eventually did. After St. Clair struggles with Dutch, she had to keep clean and stay away from police, so she handed the business off to Bumpy Johnson. Eventually, her forces became negotiated with Lucky Luciano, and Lucky took over Chuck's spots with a percentage going to Bumpy. The Italians then had to go to Bumpy first if they had any problems in Harlem. Luciano, realizing the struggle for what the five families was hurting the business, so Schultz was assassinated in 1935 on orders of the commission. Although St. Clair was not involved in his murder, she is remembered for sending him an infamous telegram to his bed saying, Ye reap, so shall ye, ye sow, so shall ye reap. The telegram reportedly made headlines across the nation. By 1940, Bumpy had become the reigning king in Harlem, while St. Clair was less and less involved with the numbers racket. After St. Clair retired from the number game, she started a new era in her life by advocating for political reform. In the late 1930s, St. Clair met her husband, Sadouf Aru Hamin, known as the Black Hitler for his anti-Semitic, Nazi fashion of activism. Hamin was an activist and later became the leader of the Islamic Buddhist cult. St. Clair and Hamin marriage quickly went downhill when, she started cheating, when he started cheating with a fortune teller named as Futu Fatim. Hamid and Futu Fanon tried to open a business with St. Clair's money, and their marriage officially ended in 1938 when, uh, when Hamid was shot. St. Clair was charged with the shooting of him and spent 10 years in Bedford Correctional Facilities for Women in New York. After her release from prison, St. Clair continued to work on those informing the black community of civil liberties. She continued to write papers in a local newspaper about discrimination, police brutality, illegal searches, and issues facing the black community. She died quiet and still wealthy 
1969. Stephanie St. Clair is an African revolutionary female. She protected Harlem and protected her peoples from Jewish and Italian influences from the mob. No matter the criminality, she did what she had to do to protect her peoples in defense of self-interest. Subscribe to the channel and much love to the answer to Stephanie St. Clair. Hotep.